Savannah Bananas. Yes, we're the first team ever named after a fruit. I do all types of events, parties, business casual, weddings. We teach low income and minority students about how to obtain corporate and high income careers. This is the first NFT business period. I'm Jesse Cole. My name is DJ Sophia. My name is Joshua Pierce. My name is Kevin Tall. And I'm Andy Wynn. And this, this is, is My Hustle. hustle. I've always liked collecting, the flipping, the monetary side, the investment, the big numbers some of these cards were starting to go for. And I was like, yeah, I want to I want to get in on this. Nobody else will ever have this card. Now this is a better card right here. Let's check out one of my cards. This is a one of one. There's no other one in the world. And this is the big bad boy that holds it. I'm AJ Dillon, professional football player, professional card flipper. I started Dillon's deals and this is my hustle. I've always liked collecting. I've always liked that idea, but the flipping, the monetary side, the investment, when I just started to kind of see the big numbers some of these cards were starting to go for. And I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to get in on this. Another avenue, another stream of revenue. One of the first cards I sold was actually one of my cards. It was just really a fan. He uh, wanted a card by me, so I just signed it you know, to him. And in that, he gave me this downtown card from Panini. And then that's what kind of started me. And then I worked from that card and then I traded that and I got a box of cards. I took that box of cards then I sold all the cards in that box. And then I got a case of cards and uh, you know, it keeps ever growing. Came up with the Instagram. I was like, what could be a fun or something cool? So Dylan's deal is super simple. You know, it's great. Got a great community there. And I do my live breaks under that name, anything card related. It's so surreal. I remember the first time I actually opened up a pack and my card was in it. I was like, that's pretty sick. Like that, that's cool. You know, I first started coming to card stores. It's actually, uh, my dad got me into it when I was a lot younger and it wasn't cards, it was comic books. I'm from Connecticut. And I'm not sure if it's still there, but in New London, Connecticut, there's this place called Sarge's Comics. I think that was my first kind of dive into the collector world. You need these. Make sure your cards are safe. Make sure they're in good condition. Make sure the people that are getting the cards don't give you bad reviews. If you get a really nice card, you put it in this bad boy. One touch, one card goes in here. If you put it in right away, it's guaranteed 10. Should be. Grab some sleeves, 99 cents. I feel like we're gonna pull some some fire cards today, so maybe a couple one touches. We've been breaking cards in the store here for years. I mean, we do pack, pack wars and you'd open a box and whoever got the best card, you know, would get both all the cards from both boxes. That's when cards were 30 bucks a box. Favorite part, you come over here, see what cards are yourself you got, your teammates. There we go. We got an AJ Dillon collection here. So here we got a, one of my rookie cards right here, number 125. Yeah, so this is a fire burst. The last one sold just went for 2050. No autograph, nothing like that. They're not numbered, so these are just kind of the common rookie card. But I mean, it's always cool to see, you know, where, how much people are valuing my base cards. All right, Mike, what are we doing? What are you looking for today? I'm gonna just do it. It's that immaculate, the green one. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen that cracked yeah. in the store yet. Yeah. I sold one to a guy. Way on the table here. Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna go big. We're gonna go one and done. We're gonna do the immaculate. I think that's it. That. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, Mike. Good appreciate it. Great Thank day. You. Appreciate Thank you. Appreciate everything. As always. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Had so much fun at Card and Coin. Great time, Mike. Everybody here so helpful. It's time to open up this immaculate box. We get back home. Show you guys my collection, and uh, let's hope we pull some bangers. Well, welcome to Dylan's Deals. Uh, we got a we got a break today. This is the box, the immaculate collection that we bought today at Card and Coin in Green Bay. I've never ever opened this box. I've never opened any part of this collection. All right, let's crack this open. Just cutting a little X. So right here, this whole big box is for these cards right inside here. So it's a six card box. These are actually um, thicker cards, if you can see. We got this case, this is a 180 point case for thicker versus 
This one is 75 for your average card. To start off, we got a Matt Ryan, 63 out of 75. Something that you look for in the card hobby, anytime you get a number match. So 75 out of 75 will actually sell more than 63 out of 75, even though there's still 75 because it's a number match. Now this is a better card right here. This is a pretty good card. Out of 10, we got an eight out of 10. This would be called a tri-patch. So it's three different patches, so a tri-patch and also four different colors. Jalen Waddle is going crazy. He's doing a really, really great job. His stock for his card is going up. There's only 10 other cards like this and they don't have these patches. This is the only patch like this. So you're thinking, you would imagine that this is a hard patch to beat. Right now, if I'm just looking at this overall, none of these people fall in my personal collection. This card I'm thinking might have some long-term value. One of my biggest deals, one of them was a really high number card of myself and the rest were kind of fillers, but it was about like uh, almost five digits on a couple cards. So that was really cool. And that, that's was my first big deal. I think something about me having so many hobbies, so many ideas, it allows me to kind of be the person I am without the helmet. The fact that I, I'm gonna have people who are fans of me for me when it all ends, that's what the real goal is. The biggest thing is to just know that no matter what you're going through, no matter you know the highs, the lows, when you're talking about card flipping, the, the big L's you take, the losses you take, you just gotta you just stay with it, stick with it, and learn from your mistakes, bet on yourself. All right, guys, I'm gonna take you guys into my personal collection, just some of the cards you know that are really valuable to me, monetary-wise and just personal. So this is a compilation, it's a booklet, so it's supposed to fold together. And this is all the running back, or six of the running backs in my draft class 2020. Probably nothing I'll ever sell, it's just cool to, you know, all, all six of our careers on one card. And this is a rookie soul. So what they do is they take a piece of a uh, worn cleat and they stick it in there and this is a one of one There's no other one in the world. And this is the big bad boy that holds it. He is one of my one of ones and this is a laundry tag. So they actually make a one of one This is a laundry tag that is attached to your pants. I collect, seriously, I collect my one-on-one cards. I want all those, and regardless of if I become the best running back to ever play the game, or you know I don't play after next year, who knows, who knows the future, but I'll always bet on myself. And you know, one day uh, I'm gonna show my kids, I'm like, this is the only card in the entire world, the, this card, there's nobody else has this. And that's just a sick feeling, and you know, at the end of the day, I can, rest my head easy knowing that I, I put it all in and put all the work in and believe in myself. Coming up next. Very hungry for success. So you see me pushing my brand so hard. You see me working on the course so hard every day. Stay true to myself. How do you quiet the noise? Mm. <laughs> Stay true to myself. A lot of people around telling you certain things to do or how you should live your life or how you should play your game. Like my dad always told me, just be true to yourself, you know, find what you love to do, have that passion, and if you love it, then be great at it, because anything you do is going to be hard, so you might as well just fight through it. Young DNA is in a sense your own person, you know, that's where it all started from. Make a name for myself with Young DNA. You know, when you when you throw that Young DNA on, that that's you. I think I have to keep my chip on my shoulder, because that's what got me here. Making sure I outwork everybody. Zaya Wade now, he's very motivated, very hungry for success. So you see me pushing my brand so hard, you see me working on the course so hard every day, staying true to myself. I know what I'm capable of just as a person. It's really just me proving myself right, so then proving everybody else wrong. But that's why I get up every day and do what I do. I'm Zaya Wade, and this is my side hustle. My motto's always been basketball is gonna end regardless of how great a career or what career you have. I've always tried to find something that I knew when I'm done or even while I'm playing basketball, I could fall in love with and my team helped me get there with the fashion and having a brand. So I started when I was 16, going in about three years, but it's been cool. We started with 25 t-shirts, just basic t-shirts, and we had a camp. It was pretty cool because I got to coach the kids. It was all younger kids and they got free shirts at the end. So we wanted to just kind of get feedback and they all really loved it. And then I just, that kind of inspired me like, you know, maybe I could do something with this. And then I posted it on Instagram. Everybody was going crazy over it, so. Young DNA, man. So here we got a, a Young DNA socks that uh, we dropped and partnered with Parkway. You can see our first original logo is on these socks right here embroidered. The inspiration behind this spot, this matching shirt, 
as y'all can see, for my peoples. Long sleeve, nice material shirt. You can work out with it, you can wear it on a regular. I think our first collection was our Blessing collection. Yeah, Blessing is my middle name. Everybody loved it, it sold out. Now we moved on to more collection for my dad, kind of celebrating his legacy. This is our recent September drop, uh, D-Wade Boulevard. His Boulevard sign going this way, Young DNA going that way, and it's a pole down the middle. Basically just resembling that we're both on the same path, essentially, in life, but might take a different journey. So far, we've been keeping it kind of family-oriented for the collections, exclusive. We redropped a blessing a few months ago. So, like, we moved the brand. I may be the point guard, but you can't win the game by yourself. So I have a team of all positions. I'm the COO of Young DNA and also the CMO. So I do all the operations and all the marketing for Young DNA. We release new merchandise every month, and sometimes we do limited editions, like we just dropped the Dwayne Wade Boulevard one. So we showed you guys the t-shirts. Uh, after we sold out of the t-shirts, we did our crew necks. It's only 33 of these. On the back, we have the DNA strand. Uh, now with our core team that we have, about five, it's been working. Now we're doing collabs with major brands and we got our own website and it's crazy. Right now, the merch is basically uh, more streetwear. T-shirts, hoodies, joggers, pants, shorts, you know, things of that nature. But we're about to get into our more high-end and high-fashion type vibe of the brand uh, down the road. I brought all different types of stuff that we've released. I brought our signature t-shirts, which is one that I'm wearing, and I also brought our original logo. And I also brought Young DNA Drip, which was our drip line. Actually, it's one of our most popular lines. Look at y'all doing it. Designed Design by Blade. It. Designed by Blade. Our designers pretty much have their own grounds to run. And then we take what they have brought in and we might take our twist to it and turn it into what we're thinking. Zaire definitely has a big influence on what's being released. So a lot of like his thoughts go into it too. You know what I'm saying? As you can see, we got all different colors of the signature. Laura got it on, I got it on. It, it, it don't matter. Ladies, dudes, grown men, young kids. It doesn't matter. It's mutual. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna, we gonna have it in a few different colors soon. It's beautiful, honestly. You know, it's it's all art. So at the end of the day, like I know how cool it is for my designers. They see their art on a physical piece. Zoom in on the tattoo. Watch out, big tattoo. It's in my DNA. You know what I'm saying? I keep it on me, always. My daddy let me get tattoos since I was 18. So all the tattoos you see in my body is from 18 and now. It's kind of like it's cool to see my brand when other people wear it and just talking about it and posting about it or whatever. You know, I want everybody else to be happy and feel happy. That's what our brand's about, giving back. So that's what we're really focused on now. We want to be able to give back to the community. Also, the sustainability is really big. So we do like eco-friendly packaging. And obviously our four pillars go into it with uh, the ideology of youth and sustainability, fashion, health, all that stuff that we would like to apply. But I think the main thing for me is uh, when you put it on, just be yourself. You know, with the clothing line, we're continuing to release new products, higher end products. We're reaching youth, we're reaching women. We're going kind of into like all the different categories. Um, we're going into the NFTs. I kind of seen everybody get into it, and at first I kind of just passed it off like, all right, you know, whatever. But as I kept seeing it and seeing it, that it was a legit thing. So now what I'm kind of doing is just kind of get more research on it. We have a lot of pieces that are going to be on there for people to buy in, a, in the NFT world, but the one of one, the big hot market is the avatar of me, I guess. Whoever gets it, I'll be able to play NBA 2K with. We have a few other uh, things like the basketballs, Young DNA basketballs, a few of those. We have our clothes that's going to be on there, a few of our clothes pieces. You're diversifying your brand, you're, you're getting your name out there for more things like a lot of athletes do. What do you most want people to know? Well, I feel like our NFT, um, the way it's connected with the metaverse, that it's one of one. And like me and my team like to say, I feel like I'm one of one myself. So it definitely ties in to being its own and being my own person um, on and off the court. So I think this is a perfect drop for us and uh, we're excited to get to it. My whole life has been, we're gonna have to try things and just see how it goes. It's been about eight months we've been working on this. We definitely just took a leap of faith into this NFT world and it's been good so far. So we normally three to four times a year pick a charity that we want to work with. Our NFT that's coming out, we're giving back a percentage of that. It's so important to me because I feel like I I've been blessed um, to be in a position where I can give back to others. And I think I just want to be a part of the change and it's just a part of my nature who I am. The basketball camp that we just ran in August, we limited it to 40 kids each day and the camp did sell out. The basketball camp went really well. So we gave 10 spots out to the overtime youth in Miami. They got the bags, the merch. When it comes to physical coaching for myself, 
I've always seen like my dad run his own camps or just guys talk at their camps like Uncle Kobe or just guys, you know, who um, just show the passion for giving their knowledge back. So I've always wanted to be in that kind of setting and that was a perfect way for me to get into that. We started off with, you know, stretching the most important things, warming up the right way, teaching the guys like, you know, you want to be a professional athlete, that's what you got to do. You can't just come on the court and go. Uh, starting off with drills and different on different rims because you have to have fundamentals to play the game basketball at a high level. I think it was cool for everybody. They got a mix of fun, they learned, and they were all very tired at the end. That was my biggest thing. They all had a great time. So we just trying to, you know, every event or anything that we do, we're always trying to show that we want to give back in some way. It's really just doing my part. You know, obviously I'm still young and I have a lot to learn on and off the court. So I never try to present anything. It's only listen to me, I know this, but I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get my two cents of what I learned from people that's passed it down for me, my dad and other people, other greats. So but my advice would be to just take full advantage. You know, they're young. If you can find, to fall in love with the game at that age, you're gonna be special. So if that's your passion, then I, then I advise you to get to work on it now so that by the time you're my age, 19, you can be way more ahead than I was. Coming up next. Our aim is to create a basketball facility in Ghana and to give the kids school supplies to help them with their education. My name is Jalil Usu. I play the sport of basketball. And my organization is named Jaws Wish Inc. Our aim is to create a basketball facility in Ghana and to give the kids school supplies to help them with their education. That was bad! Oh! He wants it and he understands the work it takes to get to where he wants to get. That's what makes him good. What inspired me to make Jazz Wish was my second trip to Ghana in 2019. We basically saw how I was living here in America and how they was living in Ghana. So I wanted to like make a change. He was thinking, Dad, we have all this land. Why don't we build a court or something that they could come and play? So all of that just sparked ideas. As an influencer, Josh Swish was his hashtag. Because Nike really was into how great of an influencer he was, we introduced the idea to get Nike to help us bring all of these items back. And so they said, hey, we'll send some stuff. They sent a bunch of shirts, a bunch of brand new Kyrie sneakers. Kyrie. A bunch of brand new basketballs, and that's how we was able to provide so much in 2019. So this is when we decided to take Josh Swish, and we saw that it was Josh Wish, and so we decided to change it to that. I just want to say thank you for supporting the Josh Wish Foundation. I hope you enjoy the kids. One of my proudest moments was when we gave the clothes, the gear to everyone, but then a little girl came, she didn't have anything, so I decided to give her my shorts, my shirt, and shoes. So she could feel a part of it. Me and Kyrie Irving met in 2015. He started following me. A year later, he donated $5,600 for my entire AAU season. A year later, I did a commercial with him. At the commercial, he signed an autograph on my ball. Gave me a lot of confidence, and I feel like it made my work ethic go higher. Perfect pass. Perfect play. Go into it. Stay low. Attack. Good. Eyes up. Good. Get around. Good. That's two. We got two more. Me growing up, I was a ball handler. I like dribbling the ball. So when I, whenever we start working out, we do ball handle stuff, and he gets tired of that real quick. He likes to shoot more, so we go right into shooting. Ja's greatest skill on the basketball court is definitely his shooting. He loves to shoot the ball ever since he was four years old. That's all he wanted to do. He 
He's been playing ball since he was two years old. As soon as we saw him touch the basketball, he made his first little shot in his little hoop, and he's been playing ever since. Jalen has been training with my son Aiden for about two years now. They started training when my son was about five years old, and the interaction is amazing. Him telling my son, giving him little hints on how he could do a drill better, how to go game speed, how to not take plays off. It's been amazing to watch their bond. What motivates me is my goals that I want to reach. That motivates me because like every, every day when I work out, I just remember my goals, and that tells me that I gotta go hard every day. How I inspire young athletes off the court is by every year, I try to get honor roll every marking period. And on the court, I try to work hard every workout and listen and follow directions. Last one, right into it. Jai is so good because of how much he loves the game, number one. He's so good in school because he wants to challenge himself and he wants to do the best that he can. He wants it and he understands the work it takes to get to where he wants to get. So I think that's what makes him good. Good. Pace, 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 pace. Now go. Good. My advice to young philanthropists is that it doesn't matter your age to make a difference in the world. What's next for me and Josh Wish Inc. is that we're still doing donations and we're trying to raise over $50,000. Now we raised 8,000. So I feel like we're ready to go to Ghana and create the basketball facility and we're leaving soon. This hustle that we are making right now is a big one. You know, this is a faith walk. We're jumping in and we are putting our foot on the ground in order to show that we really mean business about trying to make a difference in the world. We're looking forward to going back soon, completing this wish he has, which is to have a basketball court where it's accessible to anybody and all the kids can come and learn the skill and learn basketball. What my hustle means to me is follow your dreams, follow your passion, and to always help others.